Hello and welcome to today's lesson on Hubble's Law. So in today's lesson we're going to look at uh, looking at the link between redshift and recession velocity. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson we should be able to recognise and use the expressions for redshift, use the idea of V equals H0D for objects at cosmological distances and finally calculate the age of the universe using the Hubble's constant which links to the following part of the AQA A-level physics uh, specification Hubble's Law. So there are two examples of redshift used in astrophysics. Now, today's lesson, we're going to look at cosmological redshift that has been observed in the in the universe. Now, the, this first started in astronomy with what is now known as the Great Debate of Astronomy. Now, in the 1920s, many spiral nebulae were being observed by astronomers with newly invented reflecting telescopes. So you can see here some images of the spiral nebulae in the 1920s. Now, and the astronomers were puzzled as to the scale of these objects in the universe. So so the journey to understanding this, these faint fuzzy objects of nebulae, led to something called the Great Debate. What were these nebulae and what, what, where were these nebulae? So enter the astronomers Shapley and Curtis. Now Shapley had the following theory regarding these nebulae. He believed that the universe is one gigantic galaxy 100,000 parsecs across, that the solar system and the sun are far from the centre of the galaxy, and that nebulae are huge clouds of gas and dust that are actually part of the Milky Way galaxy. Whilst Curtis had the following theory regarding these nebulae, that the universe is made from many galaxies, our galaxy is smaller than shape and suggests only 10,000 parsecs across, and the spiral nebulae are other very distant galaxies completely separate from the Milky Way. So in astrophysics we needed to solve this great debate. So th this was this was uh, settled by the astronomer Edwin Hubble. So by taking photographs of the Andromeda Nebulae using a large telescope, Edwin Hubble could identify separate variable stars in Andromeda. Now these stars vary in brightness with, in, with a period in the order of a few days. So by taking these particular pictures he used the uh, separate variables as standard candles. Now a standard candle is an object whose absolute magnitude is known and its apparent magnitude can be measured. So this allows you to work out the distance from the Earth to that object. So Hubble found that Andromeda is about 900 kiloparsecs away, far beyond the Milky Way galaxy which was known to be about 50 kiloparsecs in diameter. So Hubble um, basically solved the great debate by taking ideas from both Shapley and Curtis. Shapley was right that the solar system is far from the centre of our galaxy, but Curtis was right that there are many different galaxies. Curtis was also right about the spiral nebulae, so the observations showed that they were very, very, very far away. So Edwin Hubble, after resolving this curtis shapley debate, realised that all the spiral nebulae which he'd been observed were actually galaxies, and he then studied the light spectra of many galaxies and could identify identify prominent spectral lines, and he soon realised that all galaxies, with the exception of the Andromeda galaxy, were redshifting away from us. Now from the redshift equation, this shows that all galaxies are moving away from the Earth. So all the galaxies have a recession velocity. So Hubble deduced that the distance from the Earth of these galaxies by using the separate variables as standard candles, and he realised that there was a link between the amount of redshift and the recession velocity and the distance from the Earth, which he called Hubble's Law. So so Hubble's law states that the greater the distance from the Earth, the greater the absorption spectra from a galaxy is redshifted, the greater the recession velocity of a galaxy. The equation for this is V equals HD, where V is the recession velocity, H is Hubble's constant, and D is the distance from the Earth. Now this equation is given to you in your examination booklet, so you've got to use this equation but not memorise it. Now AQA states that the Hubble's constant is 65 kilometres per second per megaparsec, which will be important for later. Now again it's very important we have our recession velocity in kilometers uh, kilometers per second and our distance from the earth in part in megaparsecs. Now what we're now going to look at is the impact that Hubble had on this. So basically, uh, Hubble did do a lot of work on this, but actually the, the astronomer who discovered the link between separate variability and astronomical distance from the Earth was Henrietta Leavitt. Now, Hubble used Leviat's work to deduce astronomical distances to far away stellar objects, but Leviat received no credit for her work from Hubble as she was a woman. So Hubble's law states that there's a link between the velocity an object is moving away from the Earth, the 
precession velocity and the distance from the Earth. They are linked by a constant called Hubble's constant, and we can show this in the equation of recession velocity is equal to Hubble's constant times by the distance from the Earth. Now, the further the galaxy is from the Earth, the higher the recession velocity, the closer the galaxy is to Earth, the lower the recession velocity. Now, examination questions can ask you to determine the recession velocity via the redshift equation, and then use this in this particular equation. Now, as shown previously, the distance between the Earth and the galaxies is difficult to measure, so actually astronomers disagree greatly on the value of h. Now, originally it was thought that the Hubble constant lied within 50 to 100 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but it's now thought to lie between 65 and 80. Now, most astronomers to the present day think that this value is now 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, whilst the standard value for AQA examinations is 65 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So the discussion on Hubble's constant leads to further implications for cosmology. So as you can see, over the past 60 years, there's been a great deal of variance in what Hubble's constant actually is, which can which is important because it can lead to pr predict both the age of the universe and the fate of the universe. So different theories show that extreme distances and velocities that the Hubble's constant might actually not be constant. So it's a major topic of research to find out how the expansion of the universe has changed over time. Now the experimental verification of Hubble's constant will allow us to understand the strength of gravity in the universe and what will happen in the deep future of the universe. So when we consider Hubble's law, this implies several ideas about the, the universe. It firstly states that the recession velocity of a galaxy is directly proportional to its distance from the Earth, where the gradient of our line of recession velocity against the distance from the Earth is the Hubble constant. Now Hubble's law states this, so therefore you've got to understand that to work out the gradient of your line, you're going to use the, gra the largest gradient triangle possible. Now this effect is due to cosmological redshift. Now cosmological redshift is due to the space in between the galaxies known as voids expanding. So this causes the galaxies to recede from each other with a recession velocity. So you can note this here. So as uh, have you got two galaxies, if the space in between the two galaxies is expanding, this causes the galaxies to move away from each other and this effect is observed from both galaxies. So this makes it appear that all galaxies are moving away from each individual galaxy. Now this effect is noticed in all galaxies so this cosmological principle that there's no special place in the universe is always obeyed. So there is no special place in our universe. Hubble's law is observed anywhere in the universe. So the greater the space between galaxies, the more the expansion of space, the greater the speed at which the galaxies recede from each other. This is Hubble's law. Now as the line for Hubble's law is straight, it assumes that the expansion is occurring at the same rate in all space and time, which is a further implication from the cosmological principle. Now as you'll notice, the values for Hubble's law includes recession velocity and a distance. Now we know that time equals distance over velocity, and this therefore means that time in this instance is 1 over gradient. Now the gradient is Hubble's constant, so this indicates to us that time is equal to 1 over Hubble's constant. Now this time was considered to be the first estimate of the age of the universe. Now for an answer to be calculated in seconds, the recession velocity must be converted into meters per second, and the distance from the Earth must be converted into meters. Now for an answer to be calculated in second, this therefore means the units of the Hubble constant must be converted into seconds to the minus one from the previous kilometers per second per megaparsec. So what we can say is if we place meters per second over meters, we then get our response to be in seconds for our gradient. But however, there are two particular issues with this calculation. The first issue is this assumes the universe has expanded constantly, which is now thought not to be true. And secondly, the value of Hubble's constant is a great area of debate in cosmology. So this leads to the calculation being an overestimate for the age of the universe, as we think expansion is increasing with is increasing in rate. So this tells us that this value is actually not called the age of the universe anymore, rather it's called the Hubble time. Now, just to clarify, uh, the, the method we looked at previously is only an estimate because, as the gal for, for the galaxies, because in a time-reversed universe, as they fall towards one another, it will be expected to be sped up. So for Hubble's constant, to calculate the age of the universe, we have assumed that it's constant throughout. So a more precise description of 1 over h is the expansion timeline, or the Hubble constant, rather than the age of the universe. So it's theorized that at the beginning of the universe, okay, that the expansion was much higher, which is called inflation. This this meant the Hubble constant was much larger, so using 1 over h is only an approximation. So we can use quantities in the following question. So 
What do we know? A supernova appears in the night sky, and astronomers are asked to find out if it has a, it has a redshift of z equals 0.45. So how far away is the supernova? And using the Hubble constant, work out the age of the universe. So the first thing to note is we know z equals v over c, so v equals z times by c, so 0.45 times by 3 times 10 to the 8 is going to be equal to 1.35 times 10 to the 5 kilometers per second. So according to Hubble's law, d is equal to v over hz, so we put in that value just calculate for v over the Hubble constant and we get 1900 megaparsecs. So then how can we work out the age of the universe? Well we can work out the Hubble constant by doing the uh, value worked out previously by doing 71 over 3.09 times 10 to the 19 because now we're converting it into seconds to the minus 1. So it's now 2.30 times 10 to the minus 18. So the age of the universe is 1 over this value which is 4.35 times 10 to the 17 seconds. Now to convert the Hubble constant into SI units, we divide by 3.09 times 10 to the 19, as shown previously. So here's a sample scatter of the data which Hubble used. Now you'll notice a few things. The data suggests that the universe is expanding. It's like being an average runner in a race. Those in front of you are faster than you and moving away from you, and you are faster than those behind and you're moving away from them. So from your point of view, everyone appears to be moving away from you. Now it's also important to note that um, um, just like a race, Hubble's law suggests that there was one common starting point at the distance between at the distance between the galaxy with zero at the start and the time since the expansion of the universe. It can be found by dividing the distance to a galaxy by its recession velocity, i.e., the age of the universe is one over h, which gives an age of the universe of approximately 15 billion years. Now, the equation assumes that the expansion rate is constant. However, recent evidence suggests that that the rate of expansion may be increasing, which relates to the controversial idea of dark energy. So what do we know? V equals HD and we have a simple interpretation of the expansion of the universe and an estimation of the age of the universe assuming H is constant. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to recognise and use the expression Z equals delta lambda over lambda equals delta F over F and V over C. We should be able to use the equation V equals H times by D for objects at cosmological distances and we should be able to calculate the age of the universe using the Hubble constant. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on Hubble's law and thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day.